Good morning, everybody. We are back with some more ASL action. Today, it's going to be the first day of the round of eight. It's going to be Rush versus Hero. And to help us in this turn versus Zerg, we've got Mr. Eon Zerg back. What's up, man? What's up, Naoken? Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here, man. Hero against Rush. You can't really ask for more. Yeah, two very exciting players. When we got a cut to the actual fans in the audience i'm surprised that it's not packed because rush he's an amazing Terran. he was in the finals a couple seasons ago and then hero always a consistent strong zerg in the asl um yeah like rush for like to me is probably one of the most exciting players to watch he's so aggressive his multitask is so insane it's like the thing that he can do in the game not many terry not many terran players can do that um, but at the same time, it's true that he is often a guy that tends to commit uh, and he gets punished for it. So we will see what happens in this series. Yeah, we're getting a look at our round of eight bracket. Rush versus Hero today. Tomorrow, Soul Key versus JYJ. So back to back, Zerg versus Terrans. Then on Monday next week, we've got Sharp versus Mini, the only remaining Protoss in the group. And then, of course, Effort versus Action as our last matchup. All of the matchups exciting for different reasons. I think I'm most looking forward to Effort versus Action simply because the one game they played in the round of 24, we had that Hive Tech ZVZ. And hey, if we get five games, we may actually be able to get another one. Um, yeah. You you never know to be honest. Um, but if I was a, like a a fan, I will not really be like. I mean, this is grown to say, but I will not be like expecting it. Like, don't be disappointed if it doesn't yeah. happen. You know, because the conditions for a hype CBC they are so specific, and you know, it's something that is not really happening very often. I mean, you probably know that. Yep, and I guess we're getting some highlights from Rush earlier on in the tournament hero so let's check them out going to be going to interview with the players i was reading some of the graphics so what some of it said was rushed six times in the round of eight since season 11 four times hero in the round of four and then the overall statistics between both players eight and seven that's pretty damn close in favor of rush by the way so Terran slightly ahead in that but damn very very close matchup yeah um, I feel like probably like Hero is a bit weak compared to Rush TBC, but yeah, it's, it's pretty close. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm talking skill wise, not really like result wise. Yeah. Well, why do you think his Zerg versus Terran is not as strong as his Zerg versus Protoss or Zerg versus Zerg? Because Zerg versus Protoss is nuts, man. Like, he just doesn't lose. I think it's like. There are such a different matchups. You don't really play the same uh, against Protoss than Terran, right? Like, the matchup is so different. It's like the specific uh, skills and, like, there is something that doesn't really, like, click with him. 
that, in my opinion, it, it clicks like very well with Ser versus Protoss. Like, I mean, the Hydra, for example, like is such a good Hydra player. And in Ser versus Terra, like you can play Hydras, but it's like a in a very late game situation, like a very late game stage. So like the the interaction of the Muta, Micro Serlin, and the drone balance that you need to pull and all of like in Ser versus Protoss, you can like freely sometimes like go mass drones right and like saturate all your bases but in terran you need to like to keep that balance like more like more specific more 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 like specific timing base and below the below the base all of that is in my opinion is what really like makes like cpt so unique and there are better players at it and worse players and yeah i think that's the case yeah i agree with you i always found Zergris turn to be so ridiculously hard when do I build drones? Can I afford to build drones? Whereas in Zerg vs. Protoss, when I watch a lot of games, if they open with something like 973, they have kind of a moderate drone count. They get out a decent amount of hydras, and then all of a sudden, that moderate drone count explodes into a normal uh, level of drones, and they just have massive econ after that. So I can agree with that. Um, do you think it could possibly be... Mm, well, I know that Hero loves Hydra Lurker, right? Even when I was playing him a long time ago, he was a Hydra Lurker guy. What do you think about the comps these days? Hydra Lurker, is it strong versus Terran? I think so, especially now that the, the Ser players are play, playing uh, close suspensions, like taking taking the, the Nationals. Um, in that kind of play, I have seen that Ser players, they actually like they commit hard to... Hydra Lurker, Defiler, Serling, they upgrade in front of three evolution chambers. Um, so the, the thing is like, when you are trying to, to pull that play, like most of the time, it gets really difficult. When you take a, like a close expansion, um, instead of like a new main, most of the time it's actually really difficult to take a four base. So what certain players are doing is like advancing with the swarm and the lurker and protecting the defiler with the hydras, you know, like it's like a, in some way it's like a careful like mech push, but as a third player. Okay, I hadn't really thought about that, but I agree with your statement about it being difficult to get a fourth base when you take a third that is near your base. You know, Hydra Lurker really does like to fight, so when you have that close by third base it's a little bit easier to defend in that sense so i guess that does make uh make a bit of sense there our interviews are done now so we are about to start with the round of eight if i remember the maps we had polypoid la campanella invader that origin that uh, yeah, dark polypoid, that origin yep there it is so rush picks polypoid hero dark origin la campanella third Hero with the Invader pick, and then Tempest as our final map. I hope we do get to t Game 5, because as you mentioned earlier, Rush, he is a madman with the multitask and with so many bases all over the place. I really think Tempest would deliver an epic TVZ. There are so many sides to come from. There are so many places to defend. I feel like it's like... I mean, it's a big struggle to really to control such map and such design and it makes the games really fun um by the way the the, the entire map pool from ladder from from esl is really fun to play invader is also a very fun map and um, the resources they they finish so quick so you need to play to be spending like very quick and it really make for for a lot of in, interactive uh, games and i really like that yeah, and I like how all the maps that we have here, obviously the one standard one is Polypoid, but not really any of the other ones are that standard. So we get to see a variety of strategies, I imagine, even though La Campanella looks standard-ish with that back base, you can get some wild games, and we've already had wild games on this map, whether it's TVZ, TVT, or Zerg versus Proto so far. Every game on here has been quite epic. You know, we were talking about, before the season started, Invader might be a tough map for Zerg, but you saying you like it is a bit surprising. Um, 
Well, to be fair, my win rate is not that good, but I still enjoy the games. <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, we've seen a lot of three hatches lately. Are there any maps that stand out here as, oh, this will definitely be a three hatch map? Or do you think Hero may pull out more two hatch style play today? I was thinking like maybe La Campanella can, can be such map. Oh, looks like my stream froze for some reason, so I have restarted it. I was wondering why we're sitting on the map screen for so long. Uh, but we're looking at hero stats as i mentioned several times he has been in the round of four it seems like every single season and you can see since season 11 he's been top four what the only time he missed it was season 13 <laughs> that's crazy yeah because he went to the military he took third place in season 12 went to the military and he's back to season 14 yeah in season four he got second place so been quite a long time since he's been in the actual finals. Uh, Wasn't that the final against Flash? I guess it probably was since it went back that far. I can't remember. I can't remember those games, honestly. You know, the, only, the only real Flash finals I remember is the effort finals. I remember that final. Actually, Hiro took a, took a map on Gladiator where he used a uh, tri uh, close... Uh, Close tier, and he did that drop bill. Uh, that was a like re a really insane game, by the way. Like, I actually watching the game, I thought he was like super dead, but he made a comeback with the drop bill. Like, but then like drops used to be like more common. Like, do you remember these like small drops with Larker and and Defiler? Oh yeah, I hate them. <laughs> I hate facing them. Well, but in this case, like Hero went like a super like big drop and actually like killed mini suplex from 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 Flash and did a lot of damage. Um, I'm not sure like, if we could see such a such a strat to be honest. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Is there any map out there that would be good for drops? Tempest has an open main. La Campanella. I could see drops to your third base. I don't know about dropping your main. We did see. Was it Calm go for some crazy plays with some. A proxy hatch and stuff so so maybe yeah. we could see it yeah it's very possible in la campanella there is so much potential and rush man he didn't sleep at all i trained all nine. Oh, he did oh snap and he's really getting in that extra practice right when it matters <clears throat> you know that you can there are some pro gamers that for asl the for, for qualifiers they they took like three, four days off from streaming and just like practicing. And there are others that just like train all night, don't even sleep for qualifiers and just go like that and like play the qualifiers. No, I didn't know that. I would expect them to at least play like the, the day of ASL, like get your hands ready before the tournament starts. Yeah, it's interesting. Everyone has a different method to, to approach the game. That is true. You know, in the land that I just went to in New York, I hadn't played in quite a bit. But when I got there, for some reason, my hands actually felt really good. And I played probably the best I would probably ever play at a land. So uh, maybe it just works for them. But our players are ready. It's time for game one. Map is going to be on Polypoid. Rush versus Hero. So in the top right, our Terran, it is Rush. And in the top left, our Zerg player, it is Hero. So I, someone told me that Hero doesn't really play uh, the 2.5 Hatchery very often, and he's like sticking to to the 2 Hatch Muta. But like Polypoy seems to be like a very oriented uh, 2.5 hatchery uh, opening, and if I'm not mistaken, Hero actually last season did uh, a build like that on Vermeer. It wasn't on Polypoy, it was on Vermeer, but I would say this is like a very similar map to Ver Vermeer. Oh yeah, for sure. When I think of big macro map, big standard maps, Polypoy comes to mind, obviously, in Vermeer. 
second for sure. I do agree. I think we are probably going to see the 2.5 patch, even though you're talking about it not being popular from Hero. I think that it's just got too much economy. Wow, he's gone from Peru, man. Look at this. Damn. Traveling quite a distance to make it to ASL. And what a what a match to show up to. This is definitely going to be an exciting one. We've got the Overlord coming out. And we're going to have a 12 hatch from Hero here. Rush. This could be 14cc. It is. I think it is. Damn. Rush is so good at mixing it up. When I think of Rush, I think of somebody that eat Raxes very often. And this time around, he's going the complete opposite. He's going to go Mega Greed. He's going to go High Ground Command Center. Now, I don't know about this. Okay, I guess if he gets drone scouted first, which he is, by the way, it'll be a slightly easier to defend. Uh, you know, now you can remember a game of Hero versus Trash in so ASL, it was on Benzene. Hero went um, three hatcheries before pool and Rush went 9-9 nine, nine racks, and he still lose that. <laughs> he still lost, damn. Somebody had some killer drone micro, I guess. But the drone does come in and see the high ground command center. And of course, he's not happy to see that this guy's getting away with command center first, but at least he can find solace in knowing that floating the CC down is going to cost Rush something like two SCVs or so. That drone has already done an amazing amount of damage. That might die, by the way. He's going to be forced to pull off an additional worker. And it is the two hatch oh tile. Oh my god. He got it. Sick. He wants that drone is on asteroids, man. Yeah, he wants more. If he gets two, if he gets two SCVs, this is when you alt Q and say go next because this is that would be devastating amounts of damage. I mean, imagine losing like two SCVs to one drone. Yeah. Like I can understand losing it against a pro, but a drone. <laughs> Seems to. I mean. Well, hero, he's gonna be feeling good about that. Has his two hatch up and running. It was not a 2.5, I don't think. I think it was around like a 205 gas for him. So this was the classic two hatch opener. Meanwhile, Rush, he's going for the classic two racks academy. But Hero saw it. So he knows that it's not a fast plus one weapon rush. And he should have Sunkins up in time. By the way, now, okay, that was 2.5, not really the classic uh, oh, okay. two hatch meter. All right, well, there is the in base third hatch. And the SCV sees it. It's great for Rush. Now he knows that there's no possible third base out on the map. SCVs, I mean, Ling's finally coming out to chase down this SCV. By the way, 14cc is such a good build. And the way like Rush is doing it, even if he's committing to do the barracks, like to, to put like pressure early on with the steam, like he can still like keep a healthy eco and making SCVs non-stop. That's the power of like uh, this wheel of 14cc and he can even like transition very well to four barracks uh, follow up oh yeah that is definitely true I, I wonder if he will actually go for four racks though because last week was it royal and sharp they both ended up going for two racks and then sharp i think went into three racks it was really low racks count i was very surprised Rush doesn't strike me as somebody that plays kind of that style. When I think of Rush, I think of in your face, tons of units, tons of bio. So I do hope that we do get to see additional racks coming out. But for now, it's just two. First stim or first scan comes out, I mean, and he sees double sunken going down. Oh, the link, the links are the, the links are the main. There is nothing. Oh, there are fire buffs, but they are dead. Yeah, they're dead. They don't have stim. And now Rush, who wanted to move out, he's going to have to turn around. And there's five lings here in the main. This can deal a lot of damage. Indeed, man. Now with this lane run by, like, the transition is not going to be so smooth for Rush. Look at this. He's still killing inside the Marines. Yeah, this is really good damage. If he can get another SCV, that would be great. He ended up getting one Marine, I think one SCV overall. And he gets full scout and he sees that, hey, this guy only has two racks. He must be teching. Oh, he that, forgot about me. He made more sellings than you can. He made more sellings. He missed the, the muta timing. Yeah, that is a pretty big misstep there instead of building the mutas. 
Okay, he does realize he already has an eBay, so he cancels that. Third rack's coming down for Rush. That small Ling attack really has messed up his build quite a bit. First turret's starting to be built. Turrets build pretty damn fast. I imagine these should be completed in time. Yeah, I don't think the Mythos are going to do too much. Um, because of that, he missed the, the Mythos time and he made more Serlings. I, like, maybe he thought, like, you know, like, Rush will counterattack and he needed Serlings to hold uh, with Sunkens. Uh, but so far, it didn't pay off. Yeah, and those Zerglings that could have been drones. And he also could have had a drone sent out across the map. You know, I'm actually surprised that there's no drone out on the map to build a third base at this point. I'm trying to gauge in his main or natural. Is there a Hydrogen even anywhere? I don't think so. This looks like it's just going to be pure Mutaling. Yeah, because I, I just like look at the... Oh, there is a drone. But looking at the natural, he didn't have like even like seven drones. Like now he's like putting more saturation into it. So yeah, he looks like he made too many service early on. Yeah, the Link's trying to go for the small follow oh. attack. Oh, if he can get into the main, that's a lot of mutas plus Zerglings could take down these Marines, but the turrets are dealing a lot of damage. He still gets a couple of Marines here, but these mutas are pretty heavily damaged, and they're also kind of stuck. As I say that, they find the angle to get out. Yeah, but at the same time, there's a still no tier. Hero has to commit a bit now to mutas. Uh... If you want to hold four four barracks power, you can put, get so many marines now. You can from four barracks. It's almost like fighting against five barracks. Yeah, it, it's true. Four barracks just has a lot of fire potential. This is a lot of mutas, and they've got their eyes on those two turrets that are isolated at the top. Those are probably going to fall. And if I look at the defense at the back of the mineral lines, there's not much. He's going to try and engage these marines right there. He knocks them all down, but he gets a couple of Mutalists in the process. However, he's found the Gypsy spot in the back of the base, funneling up those Marines, but he does lose a lot of Mutalists right there. He backfired a bit. Uh, he's now in the need to pay more Sunkens. Um, do you know if Rush... Oh, there is Factory already. So, man, Rush is looking really solid in this game already. Um, I'm afraid for Hero. I, I'm not really sure he's still committing to Mutants. Yeah, these mutas don't seem to have gotten the damage that he was looking for. And because his Hydrogens was so late and his third was so late and he built so many links, even though Rush has had to build a billion turrets, he's still fine. Like, his tech is still fine relative to heroes. He's got his starport coming down. Good micro. Yep, good micro right there. We've got a drone transfer. Just a couple across the map. The Marine Ball isn't that big, so I guess Hero has done a good enough job to at least keep the bio ball in check but he's forced to build four sunkins now just to not die and because the hive is so late rush has scanned it and said hey i can go for a tank push um yeah yeah that is true that it's already nine minutes and no hive so this time it could be super strong as long as rush doesn't snap uh, as long as hero doesn't snipe the, the tanks with the mutants yeah it's always dangerous to get a single or two tanks. By the way, there is only two turrets in natural Nayoken. Yeah, not a lot of defense there. And again, we've got this Ling run by, but again, the Marines are just sitting on the high ground. They trade very well. There's a turret in the main now. However, one turret is obviously not going to keep Zerg back. But seeing the tank, Hero should be worried that the incoming tank siege onto the natural is coming. So when attack is done, this guy can kill the turrets from two shots. Uh, so the 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 backstab potential is so high right now. Uh oh, this is what Hero's looking for: is isolated units trying to sync up with the rest. He's found one of them. He takes down a couple of marines, but does take a little bit of damage. Rush doing rush things, which is try and get across the map asap to take down bottom left. But now he's turned back. Yeah. Um. But you know what? He doesn't really want to lose this core army. He needs this to, to, to do the big timing with the vessel and, and the siege tanks. Yep, and we've got another big Ling Mita attack. This time with Marines on the high ground, they're a little bit easier to engage. However, I did notice Rush does have two tanks, and really two to three tanks is the sweet spot for when you want to start moving out with your tank push. However, Defiler Mount is halfway done. If Rush wants to put some pressure on, he's got to go pretty much right now. You can't wait until the... 
Defiler has consumed, obviously. Oh, nice snipe in a medic. I think that's the first vessel. Oh, we've got a counterattack, and this is a pretty big counterattack, too. We could get into a base trade scenario. Oh my gosh, he's unloading all of his units. There's gonna be no defense. Smartly, he stems back into his bunker, but I don't think he'll be able to hold this. SC is gonna be pulled off the line. Actually, look at what this has done. It's forced rush back. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think he needs this. He's a lot of lurkers, man. Oh my gosh, and he's gonna escape? This was a great move from Hero. Never mind, he's coming back for more. Yeah, I'm not really sure, like, Hero, they... He doesn't want to lose these lurkers, like, being annoying like that is just perfect. What well, did buy him? Oh my oh, gosh, it bought him a vessel, and it bought him, like, 20 to 30 seconds more time on this push. The lurkers end up getting cleaned up on both sides. However, the defiler should be out, probably within the next 30 seconds. There is not enough units to hold this, uh, this attack. There's only one lurker, and it's like with low HP. Well, there are more lurkers now, never mind. So where's the defiler? Should be coming pretty soon. Consume should be done, we're at 12 minutes now. Rush really putting on the pressure, he knows he only has a small window of opportunity. There is the defiler, consume! It is done, and that means that this push is done. Rush gonna try and maximize as much damage as he can possibly deal. Knocks down another lurker. Now he's going to have to retreat. That was an instant siege. Really well done there. He's going to save all of his tanks. And saving every tank is great. You can just put on high ground, use them defensively. You don't necessarily need to use them to push with anymore. That was a really nice defense. But now, I'm actually afraid for Rush's spot here. He didn't, like, spend. He's not making a CC. Yeah, Rush, this game, has decided to flood more barracks. I think he's upwards of five or six right now. And we've seen that style kind of go to the wayside lately more often these days turn players have gone for fast third base fast fourth base but rush he's mixing it up he wants to end it right here and if he had some drops look at how open the main is right now luckily for a hero there is no drops so he won't get punished usually in these kind of games when terran is putting so much pressure pressure like this what matters is like the amount of vessels like he can eradicate so much so like sir you know like it's he doesn't have like enough resources to be everywhere and like put the scorch everywhere and keep remaking the filers. But in this case, Hero, because the, of the lack of vessels, he's having like a shield time right now. Yeah, and I saw that the science facility just started upgrading or was blinking. I mean, that means that he doesn't have a radiate just yet, I guess, unless he's getting energy upgrade on the vessels. We do. Oh my gosh! From downtown, the catch up hits the tank and. A handful of marine medics. Oh man, goodbye marines. Very, very solid play in Ayok and Hero is looking really good. I was like, honestly afraid for him, but like, he's playing so good right now. Yeah, he does snipe the drone to, trying to build the fourth base, but the fact, the fact that Hero really hasn't taken that much damage and he's gonna pretty much not necessarily get a fourth for free but it's pretty damn fast and rush has no third base i'm very worried that rush is on the brink of being essentially all in finally he puts down a command center at his mineral only we play out um expansion so late this is going to be a like a, whoa oh my god wait the are supposed you worse than a danger. Yeah, there's nothing here. If there are fire bats behind this marine medic army, he could push through everything. And there they are. There are marine are fire bats now mixed in. They cannot hold. If he snipes the Nidus, those lurkers won't be able to transfer. Look at this. He actually just burrowed his lurkers at or unburrowed the lurkers at bottom left, trying to save it. The natural died. The Nidus died. What just happened? I I can't explain that, but he just like he's dead now. Like there's so much army. Fire, but a swarm is, I mean, a swarm is not even helping with serving. Yeah, like none of this bio died at all. They all just got, they all survived everything that Hero threw at him. And now, like you said, this game's over. Lings are just dying. There's no defiler, there's no lurker. GG comes out from Hero. Wow, GG, now you can. What was that, man? Like, I thought he was done for good. I, I thought, like, Hero. You're chilling now. You know what? The problem is like the swarm, for some strange reason, 
was on like in the front of the lurkers that the lurkers were behind the swarm and they all like were a snipe yeah when he did that i was thinking to myself like is this is this a mind game what what is this and i guess rush realized that hey you don't actually have anything there if i just pop these lurkers that aren't under dark swarm i can just go in the game I don't know, that that was a weird ending because everything looked like it was so good for Hero. Yeah, play was ready, he was playing already. Um I I honestly thought like Rush was about to, you know, to be, to get crashed uh, because like hero position looked so good, so well defended, and all of that it just like changed in a in a second. Yeah, observers are going back to this moment right here when the tanks re-siege. Oh, it looks like he was going to burrow lurkers and the Dark Swarm just faded at that moment. And he probably wasn't looking at his screen at that moment. He thought he was safe. And hello, Marine Medic Firebat are right here. And then he also, he pops out a defiler that had 95 energy. So he couldn't instantly put down a Dark Swarm. That defiler doesn't have energy either. Oh my gosh, everything just turned into a disaster. The thing is, like, Naoki, when do you have, like, the, this, like, grace and that amount of firebots? Like, servlings can't deal with that. They need lurkers. Like, even with the swarm, like, you actually need lurkers to deal with that. Yeah, and you've got to have multiple lurkers, too, because a lot of players are doing D-Matrix on the firebats to plow through the lurkers. I think we're going into a break, and then we'll be back with game two. We are back, and we're about to be going into Game 2. Rush up 1-0 already. I would say he kind of stole that game away from Hero. Not that Hero was necessarily on the brink of winning, but he definitely was not on the brink of losing. But in the moment that Rush had, he seized it, ends up taking down Hero with one huge Marine Medic push. Yeah, I don't know. Rush has to be so happy to, to get that one. Because, like, he was a strugg struggling badly. Um, and he wasn't even playing, in my opinion, he wasn't playing that good either. Um, but, I mean, that end, end game and what he did, I mean, props to him. 
Yep, and now we're getting into Hero's pick, which is going to be Neo Dark Origin. We have not seen that many Terran versus Zergs on this map, but the ones that we did see, Zerg looked quite strong. In fact, was it Effort that beat JYJ on this earlier? We'll see if Hero can repeat that and tie up the score one to one. In the bottom right position, up 1-0 in the series, it is Rush. And in the top left, we've got a four-pull Eon Zerg back-to-back -back seasons. He's pulling it out. Last season, it was on Nemesis. This time around, it's a two-player map. He's telling Rush, hey, man, I know you love the eight racks. If you eight racks, you are insta-dead. Um, well, if you make eight racks like, like far. Yeah. Because if he makes like a racks like close <laughs> to the national, I feel like Hero is dead. Alright, well we'll see. Rush really does love to go for the 8 racks play. Also, if he goes for the 14 CC, obviously that's also dead. Rush oh, oh. SCV is going out, and this could be for a wall. But oh my gosh, it, it actually is. is a wall. I was gonna say knowing Rush, this has to be for an 8 racks, but not the case. But you know what? That, that is good for a hero. Yep. You know, four pools, five pools, seven pools. They're all surprisingly decent against walls, especially when Terran has this type of wall, where the depot has a lot of surface area for the lings to deal damage, whereas the SCVs don't have a lot of surface area to repair. If Rush does go build another depot right now, he may actually be able to hold it, but why would you ever build a second depot on the left? By the way, there is no transition from this. Uh, Hero needs to win with this uh, with this pool. This is not the other variation of five pool that you can like make more drones and, and hatchery. Like this one, you don't have eco at all. Only for servings. Oh yeah, that that's totally true. Four pool. That's as all in as it possibly can be. Lings are all. By the way, do you up. think like Rush is melting that these are uh, a four pool? Nah, I don't think so. He didn't scout at all. He's he's in big trouble. He's about to just see Lings at his base and think, oh my gosh. Still no depot. Even if he builds a depot right now, it's too late. He can't repair it. There's a the Lings. Yeah, I need Hello. to be bunker in the main. Okay, well, he can actually buy time. He can actually run into the main. He can run the Marines into the main. He's not going to be able to hold this. This can't be held. Actually, he's pulling SCVs. This was a mistake. He's going to try what? it. What? What? I never seen that. Wait, what's Hero doing? He's attacking the Debo that can actually be repaired. Dude, he didn't attack the Debo that can't be repaired. What's Hey's okay, gonna lose the drone, but now there's SCVs in position for a full wall. What happened? Uh, this, is, this is a good defense of four full Nayokan, and I feel like we're moving on. <laughs> I I can't believe what we're seeing. The Debo on the right. That's the only depot that can actually be repaired, that he killed the SCV building, the depot on the left. He could have easily just killed it instantly. Now, we have three drones versus, what, probably 15 or so SCVs with Terran with a wall? No, we you can't drone out of this. This is untransitionable. He also lost the drone in Russia's base. Hey, I saw one time a similar game of, like, it was Calm against Fantasy. And country and try to do a rush like this. You know what Fantasy did? He went back one base butter cruiser. <laughs> okay. I guess Fantasy was pissed off. He's like, you know what? You're gonna try and pull the, out this garbage. I'm gonna show you to not even try that again. That's hilarious. I, I would love that. Or a nuke. The Radley special. Well, I don't know what you do as hero. Like he's taking out the minions. What is that? A zergling or a drone? No, it's a that's, that's a zergling. He's just down so many workers. If this was a seven pool, you know it would be a little different. It, he would at least be able to transition with somewhat okay econ. But there's the delayed GG, and now we've got rush up 2-0. Felt like just a minute ago. We were talking about getting into the game, and here we are, we're already out of it, and this is not good news for Hero fans.
It is not. On top of that, the next map is La Campanella. Yeah, now that map has been pretty wild. We've seen a lot of players just go for counterattacks on that map, and clearly based on game one, Hero does like the counterattack, but all the momentum is in Russia's favor. I would be feeling amazing going into this game because it seems like uh, Hero's just all over the place, whether it's the execution in game one with the lurkers not under Dark Swarm, or now, how do you botch a four pool when the lings are at the guy's base and he has no he has a depot that's only at like 30 health I, I, I'm gonna say Nayoki like defense from, from Rush was really good like the, making the second soup like here um, I didn't expect that one like it was such a solid defense yeah it was really good but at the same time why is he attacking that depot on the right the, the, by the way the, the depot racks placement right here that we're looking at there's a gap in between there as you can see, as the Ling runs in. Also, Rush had to send SCVs from a mile away to get down to his natural. If he killed the left depot, whether or not the depot is uh, second depot is built or not, he could have just ran in there before the SCVs got into place. I don't know. I thought actually Rush was going to die trying to hold his natural. I think building a bunker in the main would have, in general, would have been better. But he still gets the victory here. Yeah, it was a mistake to be attacking that supply, to be honest. Like, he could repair it. It made, it made no sense. Well, Hero fans, we're going into a break again, I think. Or no, actually, we're probably not. We're probably going to go into the Hot 6 commercial. But Match 3 is coming at us pretty soon. La Campanella, this is going to be Hero's last leg. What do you think about La Campanella? You said you've been playing the ladder maps. Do you think it's a, a good Zerg map, at least for Zerg versus Terran? It's banned, it's Mayokan. It's banned? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what's the reasoning for the ban? No, the reason was, to be honest, that there were so many maps to learn. Okay. So I didn't feel like really investing too much time right now on La Campanella. I will eventually, like, go into play La Campanella for sure. Uh, but you know what? Like, talking about this map and Hero versus Rush, I feel like it's such a good map for Rush. The, his play style, he fits so well. It's so, actually, it's so... There's so many places where you can drop and you can you can come withdraw chips and so many places that are need to defend. I feel like it's a, honestly a perfect map for Rush. Um, I I like unless like Hero put like a crazy play with some sneaky expansion or I mean a good nose like maybe a like Storm Rush. Um, apart from that, like if you would go into a standard ground, I feel like it's a, just a great map for for Rush overall. Yeah, I'm guessing that's probably why he picked it. It's going to, you know, lead into his strength. He's very good with the multitask. Every time I see Rush, he's just all over the place. You don't think that this is... So we always talk about that back base for Zerg. You don't think that will really have a big factor for Zero, like, or for, for Hero, I mean? You don't see him maybe going like 2.5 hatch with the back base as his third it's very base? Pos it's very possible, actually. But the, that's the thing, like, it, remember that base is exposed to yeah. siege tanks or, you know, like, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, it's not really, like, a long-term thing. Like, there is a point in the game that that base is going to stop working. And then you all do also need to take a forest expansion as well. So, um, I don't know, like, if you remember what I've said players so far, being, like, being sneaky with the expansions, like Ajun, for example. He didn't take the base. He actually took a ninja expansion against uh, who was the player, man? I forgot. It was light, Mo? wasn't it? Light? Oh yeah, light. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so far we we have seen many sneaky plays on on that map, and not really like going classic with that uh, semi island expansion. Yeah, every time I talk about the back base, I forget how close it is to the center of the map, and I remember one of the Terran players just scanning and just killing the extractor instantly with just Marine Medic, didn't even need tanks. Um, so if you can't get the third gas, what use of it is it to Zerg, really? Um, so maybe you're right, he won't really try and take that. Oh, you don't even need six tanks. You can do yeah. that with Marines on, on range. Yeah. Okay, so like, Bessel play is like great. You don't even need, uh, you don't even need tanks to kill that extractor. So that's, that's a big problem. Yeah, and SK Terran, 
that is Rush's wheelhouse. It's been a very long time since I've seen Rush pull out a mech play. In fact, I can't even think of one. Maybe right when mech was trying to get popular like a few years ago. But other than that, when you think of Rush, you just think of SK Terran. He's everywhere. I, I do hope we get to see some big macro from Rush this game. I don't want to see the six racks on two base. I want to see him try and take a third base quickly, try and take a fourth base quickly so we can get into some epic split map scenario like I know and love in TVZ. Actually, who knows? I would love to see a mech play on a zero like Campanella. <laughs> I feel like that could be so fun. Yeah, I would love it. I just don't think that Rush is the one to pull it out. Now, if this was Mong, you know, I would probably bet my life savings that we're going to see a mech switch because I think in the past few seasons, every time we've seen Mong play, he's tried to go for a mech switch, but it ends up not working out for him, whether it's to the hold position lurkers or the mutas already have just done crippling amounts of damage. Why Why Poor do you mom, think, man. why do you think we don't see mech play these days? Is the Zergs just too good at defending it? Is it too passive? What, what do you think the reason is? What I find interesting is that the, the mech plagues always comes when the maps are released and they kind of like die. Uh, they, they stop doing it. But it's mostly when the, they get new maps. You you always see like these new mech plays. And... But it, it's probably the reason because they are, they are getting so used to the map and like bio, they can like exploit it better, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. As Zerg players become more familiar, they can shut down the mech play a little bit easier. And I guess Terrans just have to fall back on the classic SK Terran, which you can play on pretty much every map. But I would love to see a resurgence in mech play, whether it's a mech switch or, you know, two base mech, or I would even like to see 111. I guess we actually see 111 sometimes because players have been going race somewhat often like jyj's done it in the past few seasons but i would like to see something come back other than you know two racks or plus one weapon every game in tvz i have to say that also like we used to see like make plays from last and flash and if i'm not mistaken they they mentioned like a few times they did it because like bio can be very strong in your hands and they were like having troubles with pain and all of that so, like, mech I'll actually, like, help it then with, the, with yeah. that issue. Uh, well, as a mech switching Terran myself, I can confirm. Just hitting siege mode on your tanks is a little bit easier on your hands instead of stimming and casting a radiator and doing drops and all that stuff. It's it's a it's a little bit easier, not by much, Eon Zerg. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, I'm not going to blame you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, La Campanella as our final map. Do you think he'll try an all-in? Do you think Hero will try an all-in again, like a four-pool or like a two-hatch lurker play? Or do you think he's just got to play standard here to have a chance? Not a chance, I okay. Like, if he actually does a four-pool again, that's like Jadon level mine. <laughs> okay. I, I only saw Jadon doing it against Fantasy and working. But, man, actually, I, if I'm not mistaken, he tried it against Flash as well, and he fails. He lost some MSL, I believe. Um, so yeah, now you can, I don't see that. Yeah, that would be super ballsy. I also don't see that. Uh, to risk it on your last life in a tournament, that is quite risky, especially after the first one failed. We're going into a break and then we'll be back with potentially the final game of the series.
And we're back, and we're about to get into game three, but I guess we've got the Ask ASL promotion first. Let's see what she has to say. She's just reviewing how the games have gone down. Rush up 2-0 in the series, one game away. Here it looked pretty good in game one, but not so great in game two. And Rush, it's his map pick again. La Campanella, as we've talked about, seems to be a good map for Terran, especially for someone like Rush. It's going to be really tough for Hero to come back. But if there's any Zerg that can come back that's destined to make it into the round of four, it's definitely Hero here who's been in this round of four four times in the past five seasons. Yeah, man. I really hope... Uh, I mean... I, I, to be honest with you, I would like Hero to take a break from the from from the semifinals and maybe come back <laughs> yeah. a new season. You know, like with a fresh mindset. You know what? I didn't fail again at semi at semis. Mm. It's time, like, you know, like going strong um, because, like, so far that you can this performance, it doesn't look to me he's going to the semis. Honestly, yeah, that is true. Sometimes if you just get knocked down really hard, you come back the next season with a better performance you know in I think it was 2006 I was playing and I think it was the best I had ever been playing at that time and I ended up getting last at WCG like I just didn't even make it out of groups and I was like whoa I practiced so much for this why why did I lose so the next season I just didn't care as much I played more freely and actually the next season in 2007 at WCG I got second place you know sometimes you just need a reset on your mind and you can play better in following season. So I can agree with that here. Maybe maybe it's finally time for you to just take a back seat, come back in season 17, and maybe you can make your uh make your victory lap there. We've got a lot man, of I have... go ahead. Man, I have listened to that from so many players, and it happened to me as well, like that kind of situation that you train super hard and then you fail. And you're asking, but why? If I put so much effort. Why actually, when it comes to the games that matters, I play so bad? It doesn't even make sense. Yeah, for me, I get super nervous at tournaments for whatever reason. Like, I'm just, don't talk to me about the game. Don't don't talk to me before the games. I'm just so focused and nervous. It just makes me end up playing really badly. Whereas when I play freely, like, I'm just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's It is confusing, though. Yeah, look at Hero, man. He's getting that power from the Matrix. I know <laughs> Kung Fu now. <laughs> oh, my God. No, he needs to bring it out now. Because if he loses here, that's it. Uh, the ASL will be over for him. And here we go. It's time for a Game 3. Rush up 2-0. He wants to close it out right here. So in the top, or in the bottom left actually, our Red Terran, it is Rush. And in the top right, our Blue Zerg, it is Hero. You know, Hero is, is in such a hard position here, being uh, being down 0-2. Uh, Rush can actually like, do a 14cc again. He can risk it, like, why not? Yeah, he can risk it. And, you know, Rush is someone that 8 racks a lot. I actually have a prediction for this game. I think Rush is going to 8 racks. And I think because Rush 8 racks is so many times, Hero has to respect that potential. That he, And because of that, he may open with something like Overpool or 12 pool or something to just try and shut down the 8 racks. And if he runs into just a normal opener from Rush, which is what it's going to be here, he could already be set back. Yeah. Yeah, and I honestly like if I was hero in this position, there, there are two choices here. One, I mean, go crazy, go super aggressive, and the second is like go super greedy. Not really play like need to come back in some way. 
Well, Hero has some type of read on Rush, not gonna go for early pool. He is gonna go for 12 hatch and Rush. Not gonna be aggressive this series. He's just taking a normal Rax. There is the hatchery coming down. Now we've seen a lot of players mix in additional drones in this season. This time, Hero is not gonna do that. Yeah, um, so we already like, we're probably going to see like a classic uh, two hatch mute or maybe three hatcheries play. Well, there's the pool and there's the gas. So two minute gas for Hero. This is gonna be the classic two hatch. Uh, it's not the best spawn to do that, Nayoken, it's, uh, because it's cross spawn, so this is already not a great build for him. Well, it is going to be tough to defend the natural. Like, those minerals, you know, they're not up against the wall, what which is what Terrans really like. Makes it a lot easier to defend versus Mutalis. So I still think that the Mutas are going to be very difficult to deal with. And we've got an interesting scout pattern. It's going to be a cross scout. I'm not sure exactly what he's looking for with this potential scout because obviously he can't proxy as Zerg, but he finds Hero first. Yeah, you see now you can like cross a spawn like this, and like it, with this distance, like Rush can perfectly do four barracks against this. Oh yeah, we're, I'm pretty sure we're gonna see the four barracks. I want to know if we're gonna see the plus one eBay rush, or are we gonna see the academy again? Right now, we don't see gas coming out just yet, and that leads me to believe that this could be just a normal two racks. And there's going to be the uh, racks. It is. I think he's going to make a second barrack. Yeah, and it's a little bit surprising since you're talking about the rush distances. It's obviously going to be farther for rush to go for a marine medic timing. But oh. he's opted into the second racks. Okay, just like putting it out there to intercept Cernus, maybe. Yep, five Marines in the center of the map. If he gets even a whiff of you underbuilding Lings, he could potentially attack with these five Marines, even if they are across map. Or try and snipe an Overlord if he thinks an Overlord is coming from an unsafe angle. So far, he's done a really good job to keep the SCV alive. This confirms that there's no Hydrogen anywhere, and there is the Spire at the Natural. That was an amazing job on Ayokan because that SCB even saw the six Serlings. So Rush is not being greedy at all, like sending Marines and trying to, to do damage. Um, and Hero taking the inside base in his side of the map. Um, you know what? I feel like we're going to see a lot of aggression from, from Mutas in this game. Oh yeah? Do you think this is going to be mass Muta like we saw Queen and Jadon pull out? or? Do you think this will actually be a transition? Nah, I, I, can't, I can't even see the like, Guardians of Nayokan. Okay. Well, we'll see. Third hatch is going up at that middle base. Lings are going to poke in here and see that... Well, there's actually not that much of a Sim City. If this was a Ling Flood, Marine, those Marines would have been in trouble. But not going to be the case. Two medics should be popping out with this round of units. And in Heroes Natural, I didn't see any colonies. If he was to go straight across the map like he did on Polypoid, he may be able to get some damage done. Uh, the medics are out. I oh! Oh, I hate the Ling. I hate the Ling play like that. Snipe an SCV, you move out of position, they run into your main. Really well done from Hero right there, but we do have a big move out. Spire's done. And because the Spire Hi. is done... Rush turns this around. This timing is kind of like late, right? Like look at this four four barracks transition. I honestly don't fully understand Rush build in this game. Yeah, I, I really thought this was gonna be plus one weapon when he crossed when he saw it was cross spawn, but he's decided the two racks is better. But because he hasn't done any pressure at all, I'm not sure exactly what he was trying to accomplish with this build because he didn't even force out even one sunken here. He didn't even force out more links. Like it's just six links. This is as good of an opener as it possibly could have gone for Hero. Um, as we said, if, no, there's no way, but as we said, if we could like combine the Cernis with the Mutas and try to take down that Marine Bioball. I think if he had like 12 links here with the seven Mutas, maybe, but even that would be kind of pushing it. Right now with just five links, 
definitely cannot do that. I am consistently looking in Rush's main to try and see if we can get get a read on the factory timing. He's got enough money for it. You know what, Nayok, and so far, these mutas, they done nothing, man. And usually in the early... Oh, there is a mistake with the mute and the rally point. Yeah, that hurts. He's going to be probably building an additional muta that he doesn't really want to build unless he can find that muta pretty soon. At the third base, I keep looking to see if a Hydrogen or a Queen's Nest comes down, but it's not. Now he finds the muta, and there's the Hydrogen in the main, and he scans it, so he knows that this is not going to be mass mutaling. Yeah, so far he has done nothing. Usually when do you go to Ash Muta, you need to do like the early damage. And that's usually how it goes. If you let the Terra like play like this on Tush and be producing on four barracks, they honestly it's so hard to stop the attack. Well, we finally see Sunken's being built with the natural, and that's the reason that the mutas didn't move out of position from the center, is because he knows that Terran will just go for a massive counterattack if Terran sees that, hey, you don't have any Sunken, so that's why the Mutas were just hanging around, consistently poking to see where the Marines actually were. Finally, we've got Mutas into the natural, and they are racking up a lot of damage. He can go to the main. Yeah. Yeah, look at this, Maybe Factory's not. already done, Nayoken, and Starbursts are going to be up, and these Mutas, yes, they're killing Marines, but that's it. Yeah, they took a lot of damage, too, down to just eight Mutas. He's still able to one-shot these SCVs, though. Another SCV and turret falls. Third base is starting to get really saturated for Zerg. We've also got Hive coming up. So, overall, I really like Hero's position. Um, he doesn't even have gas in his tier, by the way. Yeah, just I'm just now realizing that. He's just now put down the extractor there. Rush has no gas at his natural, either. So, even if he wants to go for Vestals, He's not going to be able to... Oh, the medic! Look yeah, the medic! Oh. Dude, med medics just never listen. Like, why are they up there? Was there an SCV over there? Of course not. What was he trying to heal? It's oh, so man. strange why he went there. This is a huge army. This is really what you're looking for as Terran right before Lurkers come out, which is the three groups of Marine Medic. And, oh, oh, oh that could have been perfect. But the mutas with instant there are no reaction. Lockers. Yeah, there's there are no, no lurkers. Yeah, four, four, four sunkins. I'm not sure if this is enough. Luckily for Hero right now, I think Rush is about 45 seconds away from having plus one armor. So at least that'll buy him time. Uh, I don't. This is so much army. Um, I mean, if if actually he gets like one one. That, that's probably it. I, yeah. With plus one only, I, I'm not really sure. Yeah, Hero realizes that the army is huge, so he puts down a fist sunken. He's got lurkers morphing right now. As you can see, the eBay is blinking. Plus one is very, or one one is very close to completing, but it looks like that moment of opportunity is going to come and go. I can't imagine him attacking into this. Oh, this lurker X, honestly, they are going to block these marines. But there is only four seconds. Yeah, but with the mutas on the side, he's gonna hold this off. And now we've got even more units coming across the map. There's still no vessel out though. And now with the units having no potential to bust the natural, Rush does need to be careful to not lose any more units in the center of the map to these mutas. And there he goes. Oh my gosh, actually he doesn't lose any. Yeah. Yeah, uh, vessels in theory are are going to be out in, in a minute. Um, and Kiro, I, like, I thought he will do like a Guardian play here, but he's playing very classic right now. Um, I, I I would probably think he's going like the high, the Hydra Lurker build because like taking a four base right now is going to be hard. Yep, and there's the evolution chamber. I was waiting to see if he even had an evolution chamber for any upgrades, but he does. We've got the Marines scouting across the map trying to figure out if there's a hidden base anywhere. There isn't. We've got the first two vessels out for Rush, ramping up that vessel count now. I have to say for a for a below there from Terra that it wasn't wasn't too at all. Like the tech from Crash is like late. 
Yeah, it's a little bit late. His factory was kind of late for a 4 rack. So it was like 7 minutes, 8 seconds or something, if I remember it correctly. But look at this. We actually do have the big time macro. We've got the third Mansoner coming down. The Lurkers right next to the Extractor uh, did a lot of damage, killed a lot of Marines, and these Mutas are going to knock down this Command Center. Good play. He didn't He's going to he kill it. That is a big win for Rush, or for Hero. Kills the Command Center, kills the SCV. Also killed a lot of Marines trying to attack that Extractor. Rush didn't realize that there's actually Lurkers right at the top of the Extractor and under the Overlord. I didn't see any radiator in, in place. Uh, he's already using vessels at the moment. Yeah, I think I even saw the sign to Sylvie blinking. So irradiate, if it's done, it's just now completed. He's going to have quadruple irradiates pretty soon. But we've got a lot of macro hatches for Hero in the main. He's got... Oh, okay, we've got drops for Hero. I heard some loading up earlier. And we do have movement towards bottom left. He wants to shut down this base. Um, This could be dangerous if there is like many lurkers on the filer yeah. inside the overlords. Um, if he goes to the main, I'm not, I'm not, please don't go to stop that tier. Go to the main and kill supplies. Yeah, actually killing supplies is really annoying for Terran. It's so hard for Terrans to rebuild oh. depots. Oh, if he can focus down the overlords. But the mutas, they do buy sometimes. Still three got in, and he's forced oh. to actually unload a defiler and some links just to make sure that the overlords can get into the main. I'm not sure how much is actually in those drops, though. Not that much, okay. actually. Okay, the fighters are out! <laughs> the fighters are out! Yeah, he wasn't able to get the defiler synced up with those lurkers, and now these... Well, okay, actually, he's going to deal a decent amount of damage to the depots, but this was definitely not the damage he was looking for. Yeah, for sure it's not. He lose all the defilers, lose the lurkers, and... I mean, the seat and the, 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 the drop tech is expensive. At least he cancels yeah. the expansion, I guess. Yeah, but now his hand is shown. However, drops does make the game a little bit volatile. You can see that Hero is going to take top middle as his fourth base. And the game's about to get weird because it's going to be hard for Terran to attack these bases. But as we mentioned before, the most important part for Terran is to deny the gas, which you can deny from the center. Oh, that Vessel Cloud, man. He can irradiate so much. Yeah, he's I, a, I'm not really sure how can Hero keep up. Yeah, he's got something like eight vessels. We've got another drop to the left side, and this is going to be even more loaded up. There's a random turret at the mid-left, and it is going to intercept. However, all of Russia's units are across the map. Oh... Uh, what? Th there is... That is defense here. I, I'm not really sure if he's enough, by the way. Oh, he almost gets that Lurker. Good focus fire. There's no fire bats in this army, though. And that means that this Lurker Dark Swarm is going to shut down this natural. However, here comes the Vessel Cloud. That is a ton of vessels. That is absolutely so many vessels. Good Plague hits a lot of the vessels. Great job from there for Hero. Unfortunately for him, remember, he lost all of his Mutalists, though. So even though all those vessels are plagued, how does he actually go and kill them? Man, there are so many vessels now you can that a move like this is almost like throwing. Okay, SCVs come back to mine, so he doesn't actually get any kills, but I'm... S oh, actually, I think he has two mutas. Uh, maybe not, I'm not sure exactly where the mutas are, or if they all died. But still, rush... Okay, there we go, there's the mutas oh! I was talking about. He needs to get these kills. He's got to get those vessel kills. He gets one. He's going to split off one other mutalist. Oh my gosh, the shark, the defiler, looking for the juicy plague, can he get it? Okay, he gets a couple of marines, but not much else. You know what, good plagues. Um, Akiro has a four base right now, and with this drop deck, he can even like take uh, and maybe uh, more expansions uh, in a more easy way if he wants to. Okay, Lurkers into the third base. Is Hero doing it? This is going to be another shutdown base. There's action all over the place. These vessels still have not been healed up at all. Yeah, and there is some Muta around, but I don't know where he is, but... 
Rush need to be careful, man. Why he's not repairing, repairing the vessels, by the way? Yeah, he's got so many vessels, he could go repair, you know, four or five of them and still have something like six left over. Like, uh, he definitely needs to heal them because I don't think there's anything worse in Terran versus Zerg than watching you go from ten vessels down to, like, you know, two or three because you didn't repair. Water Radiate. More lurkers dying. This is so. Uh, this is a great value for for Terran, by the way. Yeah, another drop maybe coming down the bottom middle. There's only it's only one overboard though. He's going to get the defiler too. Not the greatest actually. Is there anything in there? You imagine there must be something in there. Yep, there's the lurker. Single lurker, single defiler, just instantly irradiated. Um, that is not going to do too much, uh, sadly. Um, and Kiro is still, you know, like using units to, to spell. Uh, try to more drops. Maybe this one is the one, Nayoken, but you know what? Rush also likes going for drops. Yeah, I, where are the drops? Okay, there we are. They're at the bottom. And if we look at the third base for Hero, I don't think there's actually a lot of defense right there. In fact, there's a lot of Scourge, but they're in the center of the map. And the drops may actually be able to get through for both sides. We've got a drop to mid left, but the Overlord's back off. The Scourge. Oh, no. oh from both angles. He still unloads a decent amount, and he gets out of Fire Bat with Medics. However, there's the Nidus, and this should get shut down. Maybe not. Fire Bat put pretty strong. No, not that wow. strong. <laughs> Nine Bezos, Sanyoken. Still great value from this Irradiance, man. I, even if Hero is in four bases, like Rush position with all these Vesalists is still great. Yeah, and he's scanning and he sees Ultras are now starting to come out on, on the field and he does find this base at top middle. He shuts it down instantly, at least the gas. Vessel coming in for an Irradiate. And probably gonna lose its life, but he's gonna move in here and shut down this base. But I gotta say, even though Rush's supply is about 50 in his favor, the army out on the map right now is not that big. We're gonna have an engagement here. Can the Lings and the Ultras get through? The answer is probably yes, but the D-Matrix came in here, buys him enough time to actually snipe this hatchery, maybe? Um, Man, Rush actually denying this CC. That's, that's great. I mean, Hero denying yeah. the Rush CC. Yeah, because Rush is mined out in the main. He's mined out in the natural pretty soon. He's back. He's going to be back uh, to just two base mining, whereas Hero, he's still sitting pretty on four bases right now. The vessel count, still ridiculous, but at least Rush has managed to... Uh, at least Rush I healed think up. there are Ultras in these Oblors. Yeah, no? yeah, there should be one. Where's the Defiler, though? That's a bunker, man. Bunkers are really hard to kill. The Scourge, not gonna find the connection they want. Firebats do not deal a lot of damage to Ultras. He's gotta repair that bunker. He didn't. That means that the Ultras are gonna kill this. Uh, interesting play by, by Rush, but he's still radiating Ultras. And there is one Defiler with this army. Rush, you need to be careful, man. One Plague and this army is gone. Yeah, he's got a clutch D-Matrix. I think Hero may have done it. Like, he's all over the place. The army's gonna get cleaned up in the middle. There's nothing to clear up the vessels, but at least he's getting rid of the the big marine medic ball. Third base got crushed. A lot of SCVs lost there by just a handful of lanes. Damn, another drop to mid-left. He's just all over the place. Yeah, looks like Hero... Hero's doing a lot, a lot of eco damage right now, but I'm not really sure if it is enough already to pull it the game. Yeah, I don't know either, but we were talking about Rush's multitask, but this game, it is Hero that's the one out multitasking Rush. He's just everywhere, whether it's the drops at mid-left, the attacks in the middle of the map, or the Ling run buys at the third base. He's doing it all. Lings are into the natural, and Rush doesn't realize Oh, he's got to yeah. He's got to save those SCVs, man. Losing all the SCVs. Yep, all of them are gonna die. He still doesn't realize that they're that that's going on. Finally, he sees that he's lost a lot of SCVs. No, he still hasn't done anything about those three lings. Just racking up so many kills. We've got an eraser at top middle. An eraser. Oh, at the third base too. Clutch double D matrix. 
a Dimitrix man, save the day Dude, for real. The the Lings are still alive in the natural, by the way. Okay, they finally die. There's also Lings at the third base. And then Raj almost let the guy like kill the CC with two Serlings. I know. In this this command center at mid left ended up getting floated all the way to the non island base. I guess he's decided that he can't deal with drops that easily. He'd rather just be out in the map and be able to defend with his units that are out in the center. By the way, now you can have to mention Hero Eco right now is so low. He doesn't have all like he doesn't have that many drones anymore. But the the, the big thing here is that his gas is also pretty pretty low. Yeah, the gas is extremely low. That split was pretty sick, by the way. That is so hard to do as Terran in the spur of the moment. We've got Ultras coming in through the top side. They do finally have plus five armor upgrades, but there's really not a lot of support for them, so they're just going to get chewed up. However, I still think Hero's in a fine position. He's now only 20 supply down. You can hear tons of scans going off. The Vessel Cloud is still ridiculous. Ultralist spots the transfer of the SCVs to mid-left. Gas is going down again, man. Um, Hero, you know, I suspect by now that the main and the natural gas are already, like, depleted. Yeah. They should be. It's 22 minutes. Third base is going to be close to being depleting also. So Hero, even though he looks strong right now, if all he can build is Zerglings versus a player that's got Marine Medic, Firebat, and a billion vessels in the in the air, there's going to be no counterplay to that. And in fact, if, if he just goes Mass D-Matrix right now, he may be able to actually just clear up everything. Look at this angle. Oh, oh no, and the, he can't lose his expansion. Oh, and there's is there a drop at mid-right? Nope, it's another a, a vessel or eraser and multitask is crazy now in favor of rush he may have done it like heroes crippled look at top middle that base is dead top middle island base not mining mid right not mining oh this this is the last ditch effort from here like this is it that's his entire army pretty much going down to the third base he does shut it down but there are units loaded up in the bunker I don't see any drones, I can I this guy doesn't have an eco. Um Rush is not dying to this uh, counter attack with Serlings and one Ultra. Yeah, I think Rush may have done it with just the shutting down of all the island bases. There is nothing left for Hero to build except for Lings. He has no uh, gas. He has 20 gas. Yeah, no, and he doesn't have drones either. Oh my gosh, I thought I thought for sure Hero had done it with all the drops, but the Marines, the Firebats, the Medics, they're just too strong, and really the hero of the game are these vessels. They net well, they some of them did die to Scourge, but there's just always ten more of them. Uh at least he's denying that for expansion from Terran. So this is what probably is giving hope to him, but how do you like come back from 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 this position? Like, I feel like when Rush really like try hard to defend a base, he's going to take it. By the way, that top left base that you're talking about, the command center just died to those links. This game is is wild from both sides. If Hero had more econ, I think he could have a shot because Rush is kind of struggling on one base himself. But he's only had 40 supply, and we're probably seconds away. From seeing the GG, there's just no answer, except for the plague right here. If we're if we're attacking into Sunkins with one HP, Marines. Yeah, man. D -ma oh, D Matrix drone. Yeah, he knows. That was a mistake, or he's like throwing. <laughs> I think there's so much action going on in the game. It was probably a mistake. You know, with the remapping of hotkeys, maybe he has a radiate on something like. F or something, and you just misclicked, I'm not sure, but the supplies are 37 to 105, and there is not a single high tech unit on the map for Zerg. Um Yeah, I don't I don't I don't really see like Hero he can make drones again. There are no draw chips, so in that aspect he's safe. But he doesn't even have like gas to or, or resources to spend on a scourge. Yeah, he can't even kill the vessels if he wants to. He, he, the only way he can kill it is if the vessel comes in range of that spore colony. Well, there's four scourge, and there go four scourge. Oh, 
Yeah, I feel like this is painful for Hero actually. Like, he has these bases and the minerals, but like, you can do anything, man. Like, like Rush can even like, radiate individually, like, all the drones. <laughs> GG! Yep, GG comes out an epic game to finish the series. Unfortunately, it's still a 3 0 for Rush. So, Hero fans, was not your day to day, but at least Hero came in clutch in game three. He really delivered, even though he ended up not being able to take down Rush. By the way, guys, I want to give props to, to Nayoken because he's so typical. He have, he actually admitted that Terran, Marine Medic, and Vessel is so strong. He actually said it. It's recorded. <laughs> well, it's true, man. Especially when you have D-Matrix on them. It's like, how many how many lings do you think a Firebat can kill if it has defensive matrix on it? Just infinite? You know, like, the question is that you can... If actually... The army is play, and he used the metrics. Like, the marines actually last, as, as usual? Uh, I think they should still get one-shotted. They should still go down to one health, and they should get one-shotted by lings and sunkens and all that. I, I imagine, you know... I, I, I don't know how many times I've defensive matrixed a marine on one health and then actually watched to see what it is done, but I imagine they should still die. Man, these erasers. How many kills do you think these vessels got on the drones? Like 50? Uh, he did this move at least like two or three times. So I would probably say like maybe 25 drones or 30. Yeah, I think so. Like, it's crazy how much damage he did. He got great value from this vessel play. Yeah. Um... And that's the thing, like, in this map, you can actually, like, kill the extractor. So it, you slow down the search so much and just start him with gas. And certainly, man, I mean, they're good, but not that good. Well, where do you think it went wrong for Hero? Because, you know, the mutas in the early game, we thought it didn't do a lot of damage. But then he started harassing the natural and actually got a lot of damage on it. And then the drops came in and it started to get wild. But... Where do you think it completely fell apart? Was it just killing the gas over and over? No, I think like to be honest, it was the first the first drop he tried, the big drop. Uh, like he yeah. he left the the filers out, um, in the, in a in a different expansion and not in the main. But because imagine he actually went there, swarm the lurkers, played the, the depots. It's so much damage that can like pay for this uh, expensive bill of drops, um. So yeah, I feel like that was probably the reason the game really like fell, like it went down for Hero from from that point. Yeah, getting speed, getting drops, those are expensive upgrades. You know, I don't know what he sacked to get them, but his ultras felt a little bit late in that game, so maybe those got stagnated. But yeah, I agree. A single dark swarm in the main to shut down even the depots. I can't tell you how annoying it is for Terran because as a Terran player. In general, you like your your base to be clean. You like to be like to have stuff right next to each other, like depots next to each other. And when you start killing depots, all of a sudden Terran's in panic mode to just start building everywhere. It gets gets really awkward. The thing is, like he had two defilers, so yeah. with two defilers he can actually like use the swarm and play. And with the play, all the depots are going down. You can you can repair that. Yeah, Plague does something like 350 damage or something, if I remember correctly, and you just get a couple Lurker Spines in there, and boom, like four depots, eight depots, they're just gone in an instant. I really did like the idea, though, and I did like all the counterattacks that Hero was doing, but I guess they just didn't get the value that he was looking for. When he when we saw all those Lings racking up kills at the SCV, of the SCVs at the Natural in the third base, I thought, surely, this must be it. Because Rush is losing his econ left and right. He's thinking here, Nayokan. If he actually he tried that build, but with a different expansion, that is not like ah. you can punish like the starters or anything. It could be like such a different game as well. Yeah. So if it was something like, um, what was it? Cross? Was it crossing fields? In BSL, you know how you have the back base in your main where it can't be harassed at all you know i was thinking i was thinking that like 
La Campanella is based on Requiem. If they had just put the gas on the edge of the map instead of in the center, yeah, I think I agree that Rush would have been in a little bit of trouble there. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's also like it's so difficult also to to like to defend this vessel play. I mean, at least you build like many sports and invest into that. Um, I don't know. It's just just like, but I don't really know either. How do you actually like you know on this map you can defend like an a different main because like it's so big you can't. You can like drop from many sides, so the options are really like. I mean, you. I guess you could take like the 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 closer the close expansion that is not semi island, and uh, you can take that one. The thing is like you need to pull then a lot of defense to the to defend the shock as well. Yeah, that is true. I'm trying to think into Russia's play style here. You know, we didn't see any battle cruisers in the last game, and I know battle cruisers are quite good versus ultralists. Were you surprised to see that there were no BCs, or do you think vessels are better better than BCs? Or what do you what do you think the reason is that <laughs> Rush just had twenty vessels all the time? Um, that's a that's a good question, man. Because you, I was thinking like, yeah, maybe he just felt like he was getting an amazing value from vessels. And since he didn't have like a very like solid eco on four bases, like going battle cruises could be like risky. Oh, but at the true. same time, it's like you, if you go like drops like Hero was doing and fast ultra and all on the fighters and scores, like how do you defend a like battle cruiser? Yeah, I don't know, like. Irradiate's great, right? But Yamada one shots the filers. They one shot overlords as they're coming in. If you have just the two battle cruisers stationed at mid left, for example, just I'm just mentioning mid left because Rush got dropped there multiple times, and you just Yamato the overlords coming in instantly. Well, then all of a sudden this base never gets shut down. I also was thinking that battle cruisers would be stronger to shut down the the bases, but I think. It's exactly what you said. Battle cruisers are very expensive. They're 400 or 300. If you lose them and you don't get any damage done, especially in a scrappy game like it was, you know, it can snowball heavily in Zerg's favor. So going into the cheaper vessels was probably just the reason in that game in particular. Yeah, man. You know, Rush play very solid. Yep. He's in semis. He can actually go to the finals if he can have like a good, uh, good run. You know, like. I don't know who's going to win against uh, Solky versus JYJ, but if it comes to TBC, he ha he has actually like a good chance to advance because like he actually does well against uh, Solky. Yeah, Rush is a mastermind in TBC, and you know there's actually potential that he could go all the way to the finals and only play Terran versus Zerg if somebody from the group at the bottom group, whether it's action or effort, makes it to the finals. You know, it could be potentially TVZ there. But, you know, if Mini makes it through, we could have the rematch. We could have Rush versus Mini in the finals. But Rush still has a long ways to go. He's still got to take down his next opponent, which is not going to be anybody easy. It's going to be JYJ versus Soul Key tomorrow. And that's going to be a rematch from last season. Yeah, I was really looking for this one, Nayoken. I, I even told you that before. I really hope they get match. I want to see a rematch. And Solky crushing JYJ for what he did last season and killing him with two starports. Like the, the disrespect is so insane. I want I want to see like mass queens and snare. I wanna see everything. Just the way you worded it. I want him to win for what he did last season. As if JYJ did anything. I I guess the only disrespectful game in my in my imagination was the last game, right? With the race on retro. Everything else seemed to be pretty normal to me. And speaking of retro, look at that. Map 4, man. Tempest, Polypoy, Invader, Retro, La Campanella, 
I really hope it doesn't get to La Campanella, now you can do <laughs> Because that map seems to be hard for Serb players. Yeah, it looks like a difficult map. I hope we at least get to 3 1, because I want to see retro whether Sulky wins or JYJ wins. It doesn't really matter to me. I just want to see if Sulky can redeem himself on that map in particular. I am happy to see that we've got, you know, new maps in this series. We've got Tempest actually being first this time around, as opposed to in this series, it would have been last. So we're going to have a crazy game to start us off. Yeah, Tempest as a first map, it seems great to me. It's, a, it's going yeah. to be fun. We actually wanted to see games on that one, and you know what? It didn't happen. Yeah, it didn't happen, and I did notice, again, Invader got picked, and I think it was Sulky that picked that also. So Zerg players, for some reason, really liking that Invader map. Um, You know, now you can something I have seen in from my latter games on these maps is that the there are so many maps, like for example, Apocalypse and, and Invader, that you can like put the overalls like very, very close to the to the bases. So you can scout so much from, from the terra and be aware like if it's moving out or stuff like that. It's actually great. Okay, I wasn't aware of that. And on a map like Invader with so many pathways, that could be very critical if you want to go for a counterattack and Terran's out of position, you know, that could be game-ending damage. We saw Hero go for that on Polypoid. Actually got a lot of damage done with his Lings and Lurkers, but not able to get enough damage done. Yeah, not a good game for not, not a not a good game for Hero, man. Um the second game, the four pole, he kind of like blundered it attacking the, the supply that was already complete. Didn't focus on on killing the the supply that was building. Um, yeah, not, not really a good job from Hero, I have to say. Even the first game, like I thought, okay, Hero's doing great now, play is out, defense is solid, and all of a sudden the Lurkers are out of the, out of the, of the swarm. And that's how he lose the game. That's how he lose all the defense on that national. Yeah, you know, in game one when he lost the Lurkers and then the game just ended up being over in an instant. You know, I thought to myself, I was like, okay, well, you know, it's not going to be a big hit to Hero's mindset because he was playing well before that. You know, you mess up one time, that can just happen. Okay, sure. But then when he messed up again with the four pool, I thought, oh my God, no, no. This is going to be devastating to his mindset going into game three. But at least he came back with a good game in game three, so he can at least find solace in that. But... Not going to be round to four hero this time around. Another Zerg bites the dust, but we still got two left over. We still got... Actually, we still got three left over. I can't can't believe how many Zergs we still have left. Mm, yeah. A4 versus Ashen. Solky versus JYJ. Sharp versus Mini. No Zerg there. Yeah. Um... There is potential for a TPT final, so be ready. <laughs> I'm ready, man. I would love it. If Sharp makes it to the finals, that would be incredible because I don't think anybody would have him on their Liquibet except for Vadi, who, who's got all the insight into Sharp. And Sharp really delivered last week. He played extremely well. Yeah, the thing is, I have seen Sharp in similar situations uh, in multiple finals already. Didn't he like play a final against Shuttle? I think yes, Shuttle actually won the championship. And I believe he also went to the finals against Solky in KSL. And he actually lost that one. But guys, we are done. Uh, thanks, Nayoken, for having me. Yep, thank you, Ian Zerg. And we'll be back tomorrow with our second round of eight match. It is going to be another TVD, JYJ versus Solky. I'm sure it's going to be epic. So definitely tune in.